Hello everyone, welcome to Who's Who at Keneso Choi Kwan Do. This is Master Camareno. Today we're going to have a special program uh, streaming the documentary about the history of Choi Kwan Do from 1987 until 2010. We have been having a few uh, little problems to stream through Foods Facebook, but we are doing it on YouTube and then I'm going to put it on the different group on Facebook. So everybody is celebrating. This weekend is a very good for Choi Kwan Do worldwide because we just started today with a great conference with Master Kit Banfield from England uh, talking about the character development and the program in Choi Kwan Do. But tomorrow we're going to have the first online seminar, worldwide online seminar with our founder, Grandmaster Kwan Jo Choi. So let's celebrate. I invite you to see this video and then to see this documentary.
Wow, thank you, Master Samba, for this great uh, edition of this video with all, all different uh, school owners of uh, fourth degree and above from Choi Kwon Do International. Well, let's go to the main event that is the documentary that we are going to start. It. Uh, this is going to be five part, around 15 minutes each one. So enjoy it. South Korea, recognized as the home of martial arts in all of Asia, is preparing for the homecoming of one of its greatest martial artists of our time, Grandmaster Wang Jo Choi. The excitement is building for all of his instructors and students, who for the last 20 years have been preparing for this monumental event, which will change the course of martial arts history forever. More than a homecoming, it is a reunion of a grandmaster and his amazing journey with his people, his past, and the origin of a revolution. What is this revolution? It is a powerful discovery, a life-affirming philosophy. It is a natural evolution based on ancient wisdom and discipline. It is the change that was inevitable in the world of martial arts. It is Choi Kwang Do. Hi, Rick Bell here, longtime martial artist and former professional kickboxer. I wanted to take just a little bit of time today and tell you about one of the, I think, the greatest discoveries I made in my martial arts career. And that was meeting Grandmaster Choi and discovering Choi Kwang Do. You see, my background was in Taekwondo, traditional Taekwondo, and I migrated from that into boxing. As a professional boxer, professional kickboxer, and I trained in professional boxing gyms. When I met Grandmaster Choi, that was the first time I'd ever seen anyone take and systemize boxing and martial arts and uh, basically body mechanics that in a way that totally complemented the natural movement of a person's body. I, I've got to tell you, it revolutionized and changed my life and the way I think of martial arts. Grandmaster Choi, congratulations on something that potentially can change the martial arts world. Choi Kwang Do has already been introduced to Korea. Grandmaster Choi is taking it to the next level by hosting a seminar and introducing his teachings to all of South Korea and the martial arts community. 
The event will be held at the prestigious Korean National Sports University. Here, the top athletes from all over South Korea come to pursue education and training in Taekwondo, dance, physical education, and other majors. It is in this renowned facility, Grandmaster Choi, at last, will be able to share his extraordinary approach to martial arts. Even though Choi Kwon Do has taken the West by storm, acceptance of this new and revolutionary martial art did not come easy for Grandmaster Choi. When Grandmaster Choi introduced Choi Kwon Do to the world of martial arts in 1987, many of his colleagues were unprepared to accept his new and innovative concepts. During that era, Taekwondo, karate, and martial arts in general had gained new popularity due to the success of martial arts movies and promotions of the sport in America. Choi Kwang Do is an evolved and scientific form of martial art. His peers advised Grandmaster Choi to teach his approach under the name Taekwondo because it was already well known. If you change the name, they warned, you will most certainly fail. But Grandmaster Choi knew that Choi Kwang Do would not fail because it had already done for him what he knew it would do for others. It had given him a way to heal the pain in his body. It had given him a way to defend himself without injury. It had given him a way to practice martial art throughout his entire lifetime, no matter how long he lived. At the age of 45, it gave him a new life. Kwang Jo Choi was bitterly disappointed that the hierarchy of the martial arts governing body rejected Choi Kwang Do. Hi, my name is Dot Stoddard. I've been training with Sajinam Choi since September 16, 1981. When I began, he was teaching Taekwondo and was hands down the premier master sent by General Choi Hong Hee to help spread Taekwondo around the world. Together with my husband, I achieved the rank of second Don Chief Instructor in Taekwondo. As we began to make plans to open our first school, Master Choi introduced his new training concepts and techniques. I can still recall the sparkle in his eyes and the joy in his voice as we trained and talked late into the night about his revolutionary new martial art. Shortly after introducing Choi Kwang Do, Master Choi confided to his instructors that he and his new style of training had been rejected by the martial art world and by his Korean colleagues. I will never forget how this rejection hurt him deeply. Here was the master instructor my family had come to know and love quietly suffering. He had helped me through so many difficult times in my life, but I felt so helpless to ease his burden of rejection. Nonetheless, Grandmaster Choi persevered. The Choi Kwang Do motto, Pil Sung, which means certain victory to never give up, is the backbone of Grandmaster Choi and is reflected in the attitude of all Choi Kwang Do students. Today, many world-renowned martial artists travel far to learn from and train with Grandmaster Choi. My journey of self-discovery started some 24 years ago. During that time, I practiced various disciplines of martial arts in pursuit of never obtainable state of perfection. Strength, knowledge, and my spiritual development. It's not until I met Grandmaster Kwang Choi that I realized that I had gaps missing within my journey. Ever since then, I have been practicing Choi Kwang Do and filled those gaps that had been missing. In a short period of time since I was introduced to Choi Kwang Do, I had been traveling extensively. To grasp as much knowledge and experience of Taekwondo as I possibly can. And the more I practice, the more addicted I get. I can never get enough. So far, I've traveled to USA twice, to Moldova and the UK. And I'm looking forward to the very big project and seminar in Korea. And thereafter, do within anything within my powers to spread the word of Taekwondo. Life is forever changing and evolving. Most martial arts are trapped in time. They practice the same movements that were practiced for centuries ago. If we observe other sports that have evolved and progressed, 
Sports people are breaking records every year because we have more knowledge on human anatomy, sports science, kinesiology. And this knowledge and advancement has been applied to these various sports to make them more efficient, better, faster, more powerful. Taekwondo is one of the only, if not the only martial art in the world where Grandmaster Honja Choi very wisely incorporated the knowledge we have nowadays to make Choi Kwon Do the most advanced martial art there is today. That is there to nurture us as people mentally, physically and spiritually for vitality, health and longevity. They are always impressed with the power, speed, and gracefulness of his techniques. Grandmaster Choi has not only created a martial art, he has created a lifestyle that spreads like wildfire to everywhere he ventures. The principles that he teaches, and that he lives by, are inspirational to all who witness him. 2007, uh, through the possibility of developing a partnership with the Malaria Foundation International, it was a very exciting meeting. From the first time we met, within five minutes, we were able to just relate what the importance of Choi Kwon Do martial arts is, what the importance of the work of the Malaria Foundation International and the global fight against malaria, where five to 500 million people or so are affected by the disease and about a million children die each year. And there was an immediate rapport between myself as president and founder of the Malaria Foundation International I'm also a professor at Emory University, heading an international center for malaria research, education, and development. And there was an immediate rapport between myself and Grandmaster Kwon Do Choi. Meanwhile, that evening when I met Grandmaster Choi uh, in January 07, I committed to training for my black belt. And I've been training since that time. And I will be earning my black belt this October in 2010 in Korea. Uh, it's been an amazing experience. I committed the evening I met Grandmaster Choi because of the just spirit that I saw there and the values that I saw with Choi Kwon Do. So I just knew something was right. And then I, I just kept going with it. And right now I feel stronger, healthier, energetic, the best fitness that I've had in my entire life, to be honest, because I've never been attracted to something as much as I've been with Choi Kwon Do. It's fun, it's easy, it's enjoyable, and it's something I'm strongly committed to and will remain so. So I look forward now to the future, moving on as an instructor with Choi Kwon Do Martial Arts, and also building this partnership to go more strongly global. With Choi Kwon Do, he has bridged the gap between martial arts and science to apply the principles of biomechanics to every one of his movements and techniques. Choi Kwang Do employs the natural movements and flow of the body to condition it into the healthiest, strongest tool, or even weapon, imaginable. I'm honored to have Grandma's Choi especially here, and I was impressed watching you, how you perform all of these techniques at your age, 16 years old, and uh, I can imagine what your, how you perform when you were younger than 68, but uh, uh, when I watch your techniques, your movements, I can tell uh, that I saw so much uh, high level of uh, uh, master. We would like to introduce Trey Kondo at the best uh, of our range, training our officers and uh, of course our instructors who train our officers, they will implement these techniques. And... Unlike many martial arts, Choi Kwang Do was created in the United States. Even though the home base for Choi Kwang Do is in America, the martial art is flourishing in over 40 countries across the globe and is now being brought back to Grandmaster Choi's native country of South Korea. Choi Kwang Do is for adults because of its health benefits and practicality of the movements. In the Choi Kwang Do community, Grandmaster Choi serves not only as the leader, but a prime example of his work, training six times a week, and using Sunday as a day of worship. To fully understand Choi Kwang Do, you must first know its founder, Kwang Jo Choi. Embark with me on this fascinating journey into the life of a master and revolutionary.
1942, Hwangjo Choi was born in Daegu City, Korea, which at the time was under Japanese control. He was a small, gentle boy struggling to survive the war-torn streets of South Korea. Violent gangs ruled the streets. Just getting to and from school was a dangerous challenge. In the spring of 1956, Hwang Jo's parents, concerned for their son's safety, enrolled him in Kwan Bak under the instruction of Grandmaster Dong Ju Lee and Grandmaster Jung Shik Choi. <laughs> Kwangjo stayed with Grandmaster Lee until he reached his fourth degree black belt in Kwan Bap. Grandmaster Lee was well known throughout Korea as the first person to introduce karate to that country. He was also known as the hero of Jeju Islands, where he claimed to have killed 18 enemies with his bare hands and feet during the Korean War. Out of respect for his teacher and his love for martial arts, Kwang Jo trained in the traditional methods taught in the Dojong. But this was not protection enough for what he faced every day on the streets. He quickly learned that the movements of traditional martial arts were limiting in real-life confrontations. As an adult, Grandmaster Choi would apply what he learned from the streets of South Korea. To this day, many of the training methods in Choi Kwon Do are based on the drills he developed long ago to protect himself. In 1962, Gwangju served in the South Korean military. After he was discharged, he traveled to Seoul to meet and demonstrate his martial arts skills to General Choi Hong Yi. Under the general's leadership, Gwangju adopted the martial art of Taekwondo. During his tenure in the Korean Army, he was the chief instructor of the 20th Infantry Division. In his uniform and heavy combat boots, he often engaged in all-out sparring with other soldiers. He developed a special blocking system to deflect full-contact kicks without sustaining injury that allowed for faster counterattacks than traditional blocks. These same blocks are now found in the basics of Choi Kwang Do. Because of the quick responses he developed in training, his peers gave him the nickname Bongay which is Korean for lightning. 최총년은 그 권투를 잘했습니다. 몸이 날렸기 때문에 그 새와 같이 나는 거와 마찬가지로 아주 그 빠른 동작을 해가 잘했습니다. 제기 차기 나도 또 그렇게 하면은 보통 우리들보다 다른 사람 친구들보다는 키도 조그만하고 체구가 제거 되면서도 상당히 잘했어요. 최총대는 남달리 그 뛰어난 데가 많습니다. 그 구슬 따먹기나 딱지 따먹기를 해도 항상 1등을 했고 수영을 해도 그 이염을 물어서고 그 감이 큰 에, 그런 기질을 가지고 있었으면 하면, 하면은 한다 하는 에, 그런 기질이 있었습니다. The Korean Minister of Home Affairs appointed Kwang Jo a special chief instructor of Taekwondo to serve the National Police Department. Kwang Jo traveled as an elite member of a group of experts chosen to introduce Taekwondo throughout the world. In this role, he became one of Taekwondo's most prominent ambassadors. He was directly responsible for the spread of Taekwondo throughout Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and eventually the United States. General Choi pronounced Kwang Jo a model of Taekwondo because he executed its techniques flawlessly. However, the constant demonstrations and rigorous training in Taekwondo, coupled with Kwang Jo's commitment to perfection, began to take its toll on his body. The rigid style of Taekwondo was merciless to his joints, and he suffered from constant swelling and intense pain. While teaching Taekwondo in Malaysia, Kwang Jo's injuries and symptoms were so advanced that he was forced to abandon teaching or practicing Taekwondo. Kwang Jo's Pilsung philosophy was a 
about to be tested. In 1970, Guangzhou left Malaysia for Canada in search of medical treatment for his injuries. He lived in Vancouver and Montreal, among other Taekwondo pioneers. After three and one half years, he moved to the U.S., first to Michigan and then to Georgia. During this time, Kwang Jo focused on recuperating. He consulted doctor after doctor in Canada and America. Surgery was recommended, but it was not a guaranteed cure. Finding no definitive answers in either Eastern or Western medicine, Kwang Jo wondered what his next step would be. This was a painful and critical turning point in his life. If neither traditional nor modern methods guaranteed that he could regain his former health, then where could he go for answers? Was there a way to heal the damage he had sustained? If not, how could he be happy if he was forced to sacrifice the practice and teaching of martial arts which he truly revered and desired? Kuang Zhou had defeated many opponents, but now his greatest opponent was his own body. He had dreamed of being a great martial artist. Now, he dreamed of moving without pain. With the same determination that he had demonstrated throughout his life, Kuang Zhou decided that he had to rehabilitate his own body. To accomplish this, he would dedicate himself to understanding the inner workings of the human body and its relationship to the practice of martial arts. During his nine-year recovery period, he researched the new developments in the scientific study of the body. He discovered a groundbreaking application in medical science known as biomechanics. I had the opportunity two years ago to work with Grandmaster Choi regarding his particular style of martial art. We, at that time, undertook a subjective study to determine differences between the Choi Kwon Do style and the more traditional style. At that time, we found two major differences. The first difference, which created a superiority in the form of Grandmaster Choi style, was the use of the body in the punch. By incorporating a step prior to the punch, body momentum was greatly increased and therefore the force of the punch was greatly increased. The second major point which created a more superior style for the Choi Kwon Do method was the use of a greater follow through. In other words, the hand continued to move after the punch, thereby creating greater force upon contact. We will undertake a study to determine the actual differences between the Choi Kwon Do method and the methods used in the more traditional techniques. By incorporating state-of-the-art technology, including high-speed video analysis and computer graphics, as well as force measuring platforms, we will be able to, in no uncertain terms, determine the actual differences between the two techniques. He compared the findings of biomechanics, which explores the way that human bodies move and react to the techniques applied in traditional martial arts. As we watch this again in slow motion, pay close attention to every element of movement used by the body to properly develop the punch. This sequence of events, which involve the foot, the hips, the torso, and the shoulder, each preceded by the other, creates a stretch and release effect known as sequential movement. Along with shifting the body weight and the follow-through, it is involved in all Choi Kwon Do techniques. In developing Choi Kwon Do, Grandmaster Choi learned that Russian scientists had conducted tests on the nature of the energy produced by the various parts of the body when involved in punching. The study revealed that 12.24% should come from the arm extension movement, 37.42% from the trunk rotation, and an astounding 38.46% is involved in the leg push-off. For this reason, sequential movement is involved in all Choi Kwon Do techniques to produce maximum velocity and power. The traditional method of stopping the punch or pulling back immediately following impact is not practiced in Choi Kwon Do. These techniques not only limit power, but they can also become a source of hyperextension injuries. He concluded that traditional martial art movements were picturesque, 
but they lacked understanding of natural and healthy human movement. Steeped in ancient teachings, they did not benefit from modern scientific advances. Dr. Joseph Senebogen is a certified chiropractic sports physician and has researched the biomechanics involved in Choi Kwang Do. I've had the opportunity to train under Grandmaster Choi, and I've had an opportunity to see the new techniques that he has incorporated into his martial art. The old traditional way of rocking crossed over the two bones in the form, which highly increased your chance of inju injury to the two bones in the form and also at the elbow joint. Master Choi's new technique allows these two bones to be running alongside each other, which greatly reduces the chance of injury to the bone and to the elbow joint. This reduction of injury will allow the student to progress at a greater rate and less chance of injury. Less stress on you and more stress on your opponent. That's the essence of Choi Kwang Do. And it's obvious from those making the switch to Choi Kwang Do that this is the new image in martial arts. Kwang Jo came to the conclusion that martial arts need not hinder or damage the human body. A new form of martial arts was needed in order to retain the wisdom and discipline and beauty of martial arts, but still preserve, protect, and enhance the human body. Kwang Jo would create this new form using his knowledge of Taekwondo and the science of biomechanics. He would use his own body as his laboratory his own recovery as testing ground. He would design his own physical therapy by creating his own martial art method. Dr. Lee Denoff is a doctor of chiropractic and has been involved in the martial arts since age eight. It's been many years since I found an art such as Choi Kwon Do. I got involved in Choi Kwon Do due to the fact being that I was constantly injuring myself. In my profession, I'm constantly seeing people who totally destroy their ligaments and their joints. I finally found a technique in Taekwondo that relieves that joint pressure. Taekwondo has a constant stress and strain on a joint. Wing Chun, same type of, of effect on the joints. Taekwondo, totally relaxation, total fluidity, totally aerobic. It is the technique of the future. For nearly 10 years, he labored countless hours in research, analysis, and exercise. He looked at both physical and psychological aspects of anatomical movement. He learned conclusively that the body has the natural ability to heal as long as it has the right kind of support. Movements that he had learned in traditional martial arts were tense and artificial in nature. They interrupted the body's natural distribution of energy and inertia. The human body was not equipped to adapt to these rapid, unnatural, and hyper-extensive movements. When the body cannot adapt, it breaks down. This is what happened to many people who practiced traditional martial arts for an extended length of time. Injury rates were quite high when compared with other sports. Kwang Jo believed that if a form of exercise respected and supported the organic movements of the body, then these injuries would not occur. He diligently mapped out new martial arts movements that utilized the body's innate way of acting and reacting. He used the body's own efficiency and wisdom to determine his innovative approach and techniques. He tested each theory and each movement in his own therapy noting what strengthened his body and what weakened it. And it worked. Kwang Jo healed his own body. Choi Kwang Do was born, and with it, he was reborn. From 1978 to 1987, Kwang Jo restored his body while simultaneously creating a new martial arts system, Choi Kwang Do, which translates as the art or method of Kwang Choi. Choi Kwang Do is unique as a martial art form in that it is based on scientific principles and it promotes optimum health and fitness in addition to self-defense. It is easy to learn because of its natural, enjoyable movements that maximize the body's flexibility and strength. It incorporates the knowledge of human anatomy, physiology, which is the study of the functioning of living organisms, psychology, the study of the mind, kinesiology, the branch of physiology that studies the mechanics and anatomy of the human body in relation to movement, 
neurophysiology, the branch of neuroscience that studies the physiology of the human nervous system, and biomechanics, the science of human movement. Choi Kwang Do is not designed for competition and does not have the intensity of sports training. It promotes nonviolent resolutions to conflict. The people who train in Choi Kwang Do are typically adults who want to learn real life, practical self-defense skills, as well as enjoy exercise and stay healthy. It is not about winning trophies for them. By day, she kicks butt and takes names walking a beat. By night, good evening from Headline News in Atlanta. I'm Lynn Russell. She's the primetime face of CNN Headline News. Among those passions, a black belt in Choi Kwon Do. In the classroom, a lot of the, our male uh, population, they're actually pretty frightened of her. She says her body yeah. is her best weapon. I think that it's the only defensive instrument, that, the only weapon that somebody can't take away from you and use against you. Not that anyone would cross her anyway. After work, she often volunteers as a bodyguard and private eye. And she's probably America's only tattooed newswoman. The motto is Pilsung, which means certain victory in Korean. So I had it permanently emblazoned on my arm. Dentro del proceso, llega a Puerto Rico y él entiende de que mi persona puede ser uno de los maestros en, en ayudar a promover esto alrededor del mundo junto con el Gran Master. Y entonces inmediatamente me monté un avión, fui conocí al Gran Master porque ya estaba sufriendo personalmente Exacto. los problemas que, que tiene todo el sistema marcial, que un artista marcial que lleva 10, 15, 20 años practicando de alta intensidad en la forma en cómo está diseñado.
Well, I hope that uh, the documentary has been very explicit about what is Choi Kwan Do. So let's celebrate tomorrow on the online seminar. If you don't know the link, contact your instructor so you can register. There is just few spaces for tomorrow. There is over 200 people. So please join us and see you next time in the Who's Who at Keneso Choi Kwan Do. Have a good day.